The Lord has led you into a land flowing with milk and honey, that the law of the Lord may be always on your lips. Alleluia. Today, Monday, in the octave of Easter, the Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Kathleen Young, whose anniversary occurs at this time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who give constant increase to your church by new offspring, grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives to the sacrament they have received in faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd in a loud voice. Men of Israel, listen to what I am going to say. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God by the miracles and portents and signs that God worked through him when he was among you, as you all know. This man who was put into your power by the deliberate intention and foreknowledge of God, you took and had crucified by men outside the law. You killed him, but God raised him to life, freeing him from the pangs of Hades, for it was impossible for him to be held in its power, since, as David says of him, I saw the Lord before me always, for with him at my right hand nothing shall shake me. So my heart was glad, and my tongue cried out with joy. My body too will rest in the hope that you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to experience corruption. You have made known the way of life to me. You will fill me with gladness through your presence. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His his tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn him an oath to make one of his descendants succeed him on the throne, what he foresaw and spoke about was the resurrection of Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to Hades and whose body did not experience corruption. God raised this man Jesus to life, and all of us are witnesses to that. Now raised to the heights by God's right hand, He has received from the Father the Holy Spirit, who was promised. And what you see and hear is the outpouring of that Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. 
It is you yourself who are my prize. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices. My soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Alleluia, alleluia. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to your Lord. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to the disciples. And there, coming to meet them, was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up and, falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they are to leave for Galilee. They will see me there. While they were on their way, some of the guard went off into the city to tell the chief priests all that had happened. These held a meeting with the elders and after some discussion, handed a considerable sum of money to the soldiers with these instructions. This is what you must say. His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. And should the governor come to hear of this, we undertake to put things right with him ourselves and to see to it that you do not get into trouble. The soldiers took the money and carried out their instructions. And to this day, that is the story among the Jews. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I've already shared with you during Holy Week some of the lovely messages that I've been receiving throughout this time, which have helped to keep me focused and ministering to what is a virtual parish at the moment. Many of you have written in over the weekend about your experiences in participating virtually in the liturgies of Holy Week. You've told me, for example, how you tried to participate as fully as you could during the Easter Vigil Ceremony and the first Mass of Easter, following it in your missals, joining in the church, initially in darkness, sitting at home in candlelight, even ringing a bell to accompany the organ before the Gloria, and blessing yourselves with holy water after the renewal of the baptismal vows. We all look forward of course, to that time when we can be once again together at Holy Mass. But as I said yesterday in my homily, Easter is the gospel. It is the good news. And so it's only logical and natural that we should want to celebrate this and proclaim it. We're having to be inventive in the way we do it. And I've been moved by those many testimonies that you've sent me Telling how you're trying to do this in your lives right now, wherever you are. It's not, of course, the first time that we've had to live our faith in England in this hidden manner. But it seems to be so strange right now. And it's a unique experience for many of us. In Psalm 117, which we sang at the Mass yesterday, or prayed at the Mass yesterday... We heard the words, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Let us rejoice and be glad. It is Jesus Christ who is that stone rejected by mankind, the builders, but who has been raised up as the keystone of our salvation. 
He is the one upon whom everything else is built. And as I look down an empty church each day, it has never been so clear to me as now that we are the church because we are living stones. That's how the church is made up, of those living parts of Christ's body. And it doesn't really matter in the end that we can't all be here in this church building. We are still the church wherever we may be. And we still must proclaim the resurrection, the good news. We would not be Christians otherwise. Yesterday, standing as a lone figure in the nave of the Basilica of St. Peter's in Rome, Pope Francis said, This disease has not only deprived us of human closeness, but also of the possibility of receiving in person the consolation that flows from the sacraments particularly the Eucharist and reconciliation. In many countries, it has not been possible to approach them, but the Lord has not left us alone. United in our prayer, we are convinced that he has laid his hand upon us, firmly reassuring us, do not be afraid, I have risen, and I am with you still. I've, of course, been keenly aware myself of the great privilege that God has given me, making me a priest, but also in this period, giving me the consolation of being close to the church building, close to the Blessed Sacrament, and being able to celebrate Mass and receive our Lord daily in Holy Communion. But I want to reassure you that, especially over these days of the Sacred Triduum, and on Easter Day itself, I was ever so conscious that I was receiving our Lord in a sense on behalf of the entire parish family. We have now 50 days of Easter until Pentecost. Days in which we must live a joyful faith in the risen Lord. Striving to overcome any temptation to gloominess or to being downcast but seeking each day to forge our routine around what is most precious, which is developing our prayer life, drawing closer to our family and friends, and living each moment of each day in that sight and promise of heaven, which Jesus' resurrection promises us. So, dear friends, filled with paschal joy, let us pray earnestly to God that he who listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the whole world at this time of pandemic, that it may truly know the peace and healing given by Christ the Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness and their hope in eternal life sustained. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for our own parish family, that it may continue to bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. I accept graciously, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your peoples, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always, to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. By rising he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, remember, Lord, your Son. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clatus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Laurence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously, Accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, grant them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to your God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels, your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Machalinus, Peter, Felicity, Papetio, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue, to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you now with the purity, humility and devotion with which your most holy mother received you and with the spirit and fervour of the saints. Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the grace of this Paschal Sacrament abound in our minds, we pray, O Lord. And make those you have set on the way of eternal salvation worthy of your gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Regina Cheni, Eleta Hei, Alleluia. Qui a, que perulis di potare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deo, Alleluia. We are safe down against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And thou, our Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down into hell Satan and all the wicked spirits, the wonderful of all, for the glory of souls. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. Holy Guardian Angel, 